Welcome to Vention Tips. Today, we'll cover the basics of designing a Ganji robot in Vention's Machine Builder. In this tutorial, you'll learn the essentials that should be considered when creating your very own 2 or 3 axis system. If you'd like to follow along, the links used in today's designs can be found in the description below. This session will be broken down into four main parts. Designing a 2 axis system, designing a rigid base frame, designing a 3 axis system, and additional hardware. If you're new to designing with linear actuators, I'd recommend looking into our guide on selecting the right one for your application, as well as the tutorial video on using our configuration assistant, both linked below. Part 1. Designing a 2-axis system The goal of this section is to design a simple 2-axis system with a single horizontal axis and a single vertical axis, as seen on screen. For this design, we're going to make the assumption that the type of actuator, the desired payload, the required travel, and speed have already been chosen. This will allow us to focus entirely on the design itself. The system will be using the heavy duty enclosed timing belt for the horizontal axis and the enclosed ball screw for the vertical. As such, we'll start off by adding one of each with respective lengths of 2,295 mm and 1,530 mm, both found in the linear motion category in the parts library. Once we've added the two actuators to the design, the next step is to build the interface between them. While still in the linear motion category, we'll scroll down to the gantry plate section and select the actuator mounting plate and bring it into the design, attaching it to our horizontal axis. This part was specifically designed to act as an interface between two linear actuators or as a robot mounting solution. From here, we'll bring in a gusset plate for 90 degree actuator mounting and attach three of them to the existing plate. Finally, we'll complete the interface assembly by adding one more actuator mounting plate. Once done, we'll use the point-to-point -point connection tool to attach the ball screw to the enclosed timing belt. This completes the basis of our two-axis system. However, it should be noted that there are multiple ways to attach two actuators, more of which will be covered later on in the video. Part 2. Designing a rigid base frame Once you have completed your actuators, you can get to designing the supporting structure. For this portion of the video, we'll be highlighting the key features that should be kept in mind when designing the base frame. As such, we'll bring in a partially completed structure and make note of these important features. The first thing to note is that the majority of the frame is designed using our 90 by 90 mm aluminum extrusion. This offers the most rigid structure when compared to the other available profiles. For systems carrying larger loads, it is recommended to support the actuators via a secondary extrusion underneath. When joining extrusions at critical points, such as the corners of the frame, it is recommended to hold the extrusions in tension as opposed to in friction, hence the additional plating on top. Where this is not possible, fully attaching at least two faces of each side of the extrusion is recommended. To ensure the frame does not experience any lateral movement during operation, additional horizontal bracing should be added. If possible, this should be done to both the top and the bottom of the structure. To prevent further lateral movement, angled bracing can be added as well. Finally, if floor space permits, creating a wider footprint at the base via angled bracing will help keep the gantry robot stable while in motion. These additions will increase the rigidity of the system to ensure high repeatability and accuracy of your gantry robot. Part 3. Designing a 3-axis system Similar to before, we'll be designing towards a partially completed system as seen on screen. Again, we'll make the assumption that all parameters have been pre-selected so that we can go ahead with the designing. For this gantry robot, we'll start off by bringing in the X-axis, a 1530mm heavy-duty enclosed timing belt. We'll then use the triad to rotate it 90 degrees. This is done so that we can directly mount our Z-axis later on without an interface plate. Next, we'll bring in two standard enclosed timing belts with a length of 2295mm. These will make up our Y-axis. The reason why two parallel actuators are used for the y-axis is that the distance between them is large enough that binding would occur if only one side were to be driven. To learn more on this, you can refer to our linear guides datasheet linked below. From here, we'll copy over two more of the angled actuator mounting subassemblies used earlier and attach them to our standard enclosed timing belts. We'll attach one to each of the y-axis actuators and use the point-to-point -point connection tool to attach our x-axis.
There are a few possibilities to secure the actuator to the mounting plate, which include the GP gussets, directly fastening it through the back of the plate, or using the specially designed clamping connector. In our case, we'll use the clamping connector as it allows for easy mounting of the actuator during deployment. A minimum of two clamps are required per side of the actuator, however, up to four can be used. After this, we'll bring in a 585mm enclosed ball screw as the z-axis and attach it to the gantry plate of the x-axis. This is possible via the tapped holes in both actuators' gantry plates. Now that we've completed the actuators, we'll design a simple base frame for the actuators to rest on. We'll attach the frame to the actuators using self-aligning mounts. These are required when designing a system with two mechanically joined parallel enclosed actuators. The self-aligning mounts accommodate for any slight misalignment of the base structure or actuators and ensure that the end of arm tool follows the desired path. There are two types of these mounts, a leader and a follower. The leader will be used to attach one of the parallel actuators and the follower to attach the other. There should be one at either end of the actuator with each mount spaced no more than one meter apart. Now that we've covered the basics of designing a two axis, a three axis, and a base frame, we'll go over the components that should be added to your design to ensure the smooth operation of your gantry robot. Part four, additional hardware. First, cable drag chains should be added to a system that has cabling that travels with an actuator gantry. This is done to ensure that no cables are caught in the machine during operation. Second, if the travel of one of your actuators is shortened due to an overhanging part or smaller subframe, it is important that you reposition your overtravel sensors to prevent a collision. Finally, any vertical axis should include a power off brake to prevent the actuator from free falling should an e stop event be triggered. This covers the basics of designing a gantry robot and machine builder. Should you have any more questions, feel free to ask on our user form linked below. Thanks for watching and happy designing!